Hello, hello, hello. This is Tom from Tom and Ruth Philippine Adventures. How's everybody today? Today I want to talk about uh, it's updates, coffee time. It's going to be many different subjects, many different things. So you know me, I'll get on one subject, come back to one. Anyway, today we're going to talk about a couple of things. Here right at home. Anyway, we're still traveling around. We're stationary now. Uh, we're not in uh, Mramug anymore right now. We still have our house. Everything is fine. Everything is perfect and we are well. <clears throat> We're doing very well. Uh, we decided just to get out from the area and explore more of the Philippines. See the different islands, go uh, new adventures, new exploring, new things, and actually see good, uh, wonderful environments. But we have found a couple of things that I have noticed that uh, here in the Philippines, uh, you've been to one island, you've been to all of them. There's different beaches, different sands, different colors. The resorts are, some are still closed. Some are very limited uh, personnel, uh, very uh, meaning that uh, they don't have enough to make food. They don't have food there. You have to walk and find food. And these are some really nice resorts. Some were classified as uh, four and five star resorts, but we found ourselves, it's okay. We adapt, you know, that's about the Philippines. You gotta learn to adapt here or you won't survive. Quite a few people have messaged me uh, recently about uh, being stuck in a hospital, things like that. Uh, quite a few, a bunch. Uh, were, they're not able to pay the, their hospital bill. Uh, I had to get the embassy involved in it. Or they're having problems with Social Security, uh, not getting their checks and things like that. Uh, that has to be taken up with Social Security. But remember, Social Security handles all of this area, all of Asia, all of this area. So. It's not like it just handles one little piece here in the Philippines. It handles everybody. Bangkok, Thailand, all over. Hong Kong. So you'll find that it may be a while for them to get back to you. They will get back to you. Just stay vigilant. Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, they're accepting phone calls. So just just be smart and keep on it. And don't, don't give up. Never give up. Never give up on anything, right? Um, the people who are getting stuck in hospitals, the same old story. Hospitals uh, are not, a lot of places are not even accepting insurance at all. It's cash only. Insurance companies have uh, gone bye-bye. They didn't pay the bills in COVID time, so the uh, hospitals are not accepting the payments from, or not accepting any money because they still owe money from the insurance carriers. And the insurance carriers are trying to work that out with them, but uh, it's, it's not happening. So a lot of guys are finding themselves in unfamiliar territories getting stuck uh, paying the bill uh, that was quoted two hundred thousand ends up being four or five six hundred thousand and then find themselves not in a good situation. So in that instance, what they do, the embassy, you call the embassy, they will come and they will take care of it and they will take care of you because you are a citizen. Don't let people tell you that they don't take care of the people. They take care of the people. People tell me, oh, they don't. They do. I can vouch for it. Uh, we sent some people back to the states through a help were people to message me and send people back to states where they didn't couldn't make it financially. There's quite a few people here that are coming to the Philippines and there's an exodus, a mass exodus of people leaving the Philippines. Numbers are very, uh, some quoted on the embassy website are different, but there are numbers and I'm not going to quote those because I don't know if what's factual. I haven't got the correct numbers from Paul at the embassy yet. So uh, it doesn't really matter who's coming and who's going. As long as you have a plan when you come here, here is the thing. Sometimes the Philippines is great for vacations, one, two, three, four months. Sometimes the Philippines is great to live full time all the time. But you find yourself maybe expect an escape because you may find yourself three, four, five, six years down the road. This may not be the place for you and it may not be the place that you want to be. Because a lot of times what happens is things change, environments change, your environment changes, maybe your relationship changes, and there's quite a few of those relationships change considerably to a lot of guys, meaning the Filipina has left them with kids or without kids. I have a gentleman up in, um, he's up in uh, Cagayan Valley. He's up uh, Baguio in the corner up there. Uh, he's an American been here his wife left him uh, they have two kids and uh, just left him just out of the clear booth just left him why he's he doesn't know he thinks 
other things. But see, I'm only hearing his story. I don't know her story. So whether or what happens is they just split. And it just happens. So you have to kind of be prepared for that. It's the same thing in the States. You're always prepared to plan A, B, C, D, E, right? As, I, as we all know what happens here in the Philippines and in the States, is it better living here compared to living in the United States of America? In some cases, it's better here. But in some cases, it's better in the States. I have so many people tell me that it's, it's just a horrible place in the States. It's not a place to be. But then on the other hand, I hear people more than the negative tell me it's a great place to be. They've gone back. They realize they left there, and they shouldn't have left there. They realize the grass is not as green on this side of the fence. Because there's no karaoke at 2 a.m. There's no horns honking at 3 a.m. When you're supposed to be somewhere at 3 o'clock, you were there at 3 o'clock, not at 3.30 or 4, 4.35, 5.36. There are criteria here that's just really different. It throws people over the edge, out of stock, sir. I can't get the beef. Where's the beef, right? Remember that commercial, Wendy's? Where's the beef? But then they find the situations where you can't really find it. Like, here's an example. We went to SNR the other day, bought some stuff, got some ground beef, and it's not good. It wasn't good. So what do you do? Can you take your money back? No, you cannot. So, wasted $10. So what do you do in that situation? Nothing. You just don't buy it again. Be prepared to be able to open it, taste it, not taste it, but smell it. Make sure it's good. Same thing on all. If your chicken smells, don't buy it. If your meat smells, don't buy it because it's gassy or something happens. If, you're, if your fish smells, don't buy it. Here in the Philippines, you've got to constantly work at that. A lot of guys are coming here and saying, Tom, I have uh, $10,000. Is that enough money? It can be enough money unless something happens to you where you're actually in a situation where health care or you're helping some of the family. Some of the guys come here with 30, 40, 50 grand, 60 grand, and five years later found that they spent that 50, 60 grand, and then they're stuck. They're waiting on the check and waiting on to pay the bills and pay the debt that they had from the previous month and previous month of that. And they find themselves in a situation where they can't get out. And quite a few guys are like that. I can name 10 right now off the top of my head. And some are vloggers. And you know what? That's just the way life is. Life works that way. It's the same in the States, no matter where you go. The States, uh, the, you know, it's like Filipina P. She's there in the States. She's in Daytona. She did a video recently. She likes it. She loves it. Not everybody loves it. But see, there's the thing. Turn off the news, right? Turn off the things. Some guys are saying, hey, they went to the store and they sent me price comparison. I was going to do that today. But I don't want to be so negative about it. Because what he showed me at the store yesterday and what I can buy here, it's 20% cheaper in the States than it is here. A loaf of bread in the States is a lot cheaper than a loaf of bread here. And it's double the size in the States. A lot of things you don't realize too, a lot of stuff that are here, like cereals and uh, some of the detergents and their tides, even though it's maybe manufactured in, in Thailand and places like that, it's still the quality is not there, the quality of the products. Coca-Cola does not like taste like Coca-Cola. Beef, a, a Burger King does not taste like a Burger King beef burger in the States, same as McDonald's, same as some of the others. And in some cases, the Subway here is not like the Subway in the United States, you know, the meatballs and things like that. Italian dinners here are not necessarily like it unless they're importing them in from the States. And a lot of people are doing that. A lot of people are actually importing the goods in here from the States and their costs of when you go eat that Italian food, it's a little bit pricey because they're importing the goods, except for the meats and things like that. And you really can't do that. It's really hard. Their grass-fed beef here is not necessarily grass-fed. They call it grass-fed, but uh, it has a completely different taste to it. And then sometimes you're paying $40, $50 for a steak, uh, even $20 for a steak, and the quality is just, you know, just, just not there. It's just not there. It's not like the uh, good old steaks that you can get in USA at uh, Ralph's and uh, Hypermark and uh, you know top supermarkets, Wegmans, things like that, Publix. So you have to really um, do your due diligence. So the guys that are coming here, I just say this. Plan what you're going to do. Plan your, plan your escape. You need to have an escape. If you don't have an escape, you, you got to have an escape. I don't care if it's just a card that has three grand on it. Keep that card and don't touch it. 
and that is your escape to get out because you never 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 know what's going to happen so many guys have just told me i'm staying here forever and ever and they're gone they're gone i remember i i can name well seven guys i thought of this morning that said i'll never leave here they're gone they're gone they built houses they built beautiful houses in Davo. I, you know, beautiful house over in uh, Iloilo, beautiful house up in Naga. One built a beautiful house in Bahol, just got out of there. And he got out because of trouble around the area, trouble he was involved in because of safety issues. And you got to be aware of that. Don't build your house out in the middle of the forest where people can come down out of the mountains and try to take it from you. So you have to be aware of that. And people say, well, it's safe there. Well, nowhere is safe in the world. Nowhere is safe in the world. I don't care if you're sitting down drinking cold glass of tea there in southern Alabama sitting on your porch. Is that safe? Well, yeah, it's safe. Is it safe as it's going to be? It's pretty safe. Yes, it's the same thing as me sitting on the porch here. It's fairly safe. Fairly, fairly safe. And you have to be aware of the environment because people are pegging you. People peg you. And what I mean by that is, is you're walking you're out in the public, you're walking things, and uh, people just don't like me too. I've had people, even as my travels, just didn't like me. Just, why are you here? Well, I've been, how long have you been here? Eight years? Eight years plus? You happy? Yeah, I'm happy, happily married. And, uh, you know, just you just don't like foreigners. Not just me, personally, but just don't like foreigners in general. Because you're coming here taking the girls away from them. Because there's many different reasons. Because they had a bad experience with a foreigner in the past, or they had a, proud, a present experience with foreign because of a family, uh, husband, wife, cousin, brother. You guys understand the scenarios there. And there's a lot of that happens too. But coming to the Philippines, you just have to be aware of everything that's going on and be aware of the escape plan and have the cash available where you can get out of Dodge. Have the cash available if you get sick or you have a problem with the tooth and you need to spend $1,000 on that tooth because don't think they're going up in prices too. We went and looked at eye care the other day. When I first got here in the Philippines, eye care is hundred bucks. Uh, this and some nice lenses and things like that. Now it's gone up considerably, like uh, uh, three, four hundred bucks for glasses. Uh, per for us, so it's going to cost us thousand dollars for glasses. Well, I can go to the USA, and there's a plan there that I used to have. I can get it, um, and it's a little cheaper than that. But that's the way life works you know that's why way life is insurance and things like that i have medicare and medicaid there in the states uh and ruth and rr will not have any insurance here i don't have any insurance i have philly health i'm grandfathered in in philly health i have philly health we grandfathered in that eight years ago but it pays 10 percent tops if you're lucky and you sweet talk the lady you might get 20 percent off your bill so i'll just save you you know a couple of bucks depending on how much your bill is but even the, the like for an example a, a guy getting an operation guy got an operation down in uh Dumaguete and it was four thousand dollars i can get the same operation up here for uh two thousand dollars you can go up in uh up north and you can get in some areas it's going to be six or eight thousand dollars for the same operation and so don't think that coming here is your way out and you way out and you way out because it's going to have all the answers for you. It will not have all the answers for you. It'll only have a few answers for you. Uh, where you can go get eye care, dental, rental is cheap, uh, rental of houses, things like that. Well, it's considered cheap. Some of the cases considered cheap. You can actually buy land uh, in in USA right now. I was just on a website this morning. You can buy land for $5,000. You can buy land for $1,800. A quarter acre, eighth acre, things like that. High and dry, electric and water. And so we're we're searching, and we we found us a couple lots that we're actually uh, pursuing. And you make payments on it. You can make a payment on it, no interest, things like that. So they're they're selling these lots, and they're out, and they're close to the cities. Some are way out, out with no water, no electric. But a ninety percent of them are electric, and you can actually park an RV on them. So there's a place up in Cholo. That Ruth and I were looking at uh, is 5K uh, up in Sholo, uh, Arizona, and uh, it's it's cheap, uh, high and dry. Um, of course, it has power right on the property and water has septic the whole nine yards. So set there. So I'm just telling you guys, don't 
think that things are always so rosy, but then again, too, it is. Great place to come, stay a couple, two, three months, snowbird, go back. Or six months, six months. That's what a lot of guys are doing, six months and six months. And it's a great opportunity to come here and enjoy yourself. I know uh, a friend of mine, uh, Milo, that's what they do. They come here and stay six months in Cebu, and then they go back up, up to Oregon and Portland there and do their thing. Uh, they have an RV, they travel around and enjoy their life that way, and it works out great for them. So I want to thank everybody for always watching my video. Sorry it went on 15 minutes, but people are telling me, keep talking, do more live streams. I promise you we'll do a live stream. Uh, I've been lazy. God bless everybody, and I'll see you guys next time on Tom and Ruth.